Wouldn't it be great to know what the coach of extremely successful basketball players such as Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant, what that coach actually taught Kobe and Michael? Today we're going to go over that Tim Grover, their coach, taught them. The first thing would be that most people say that once you fail, you want to make sure that you get back up as quickly as possible. However, Tim Grover strongly disagrees with this. According to Tim Grover, we should rather, once we failed, stay down there for a bit and reflect on our performance, on the mistakes we might have made. And only then, when we've figured out what we've done wrong, only then should we get back up. Because otherwise, what will happen if we don't reflect on our mistakes is that we fall down, get back up again, fail because of the same reason why we failed before, and the cycle continues. And then the second thing is that most people want to be closers. However, Tim Grover says that you don't necessarily want to be a closer, but you want to be what he coined a cleaner. Tim Grover's definition of these two different types of people is that closers are people who win once, whereas cleaners are people who win repeatedly, who always want to improve no matter how well they've done in the past. One great example of someone who always wants to improve is Michael Jordan. Before Tim Grover coached these basketball players, he sent everyone a letter in Michael Jordan's team, except for Michael Jordan, because he thought, what's the point of sending Michael Jordan the letter that I would be interested in coaching then, if he's already the best and he actually doesn't need anyone to tell him how to improve, because he's already so good. And what's interesting is that the only basketball player who actually was interested in being coached was Michael Jordan. And Michael Jordan basically found someone else's letter. And then the third thing that Tim Grover believes is that showing up is not enough. There are a lot of people who think that showing up is the most important thing. But for elite performers such as Kobe Bryant and Michael Jordan, when you're already at such a good level that everyone's already putting in the practice, you want to make sure that you do it very intentionally and that you don't just go through the motions. For example, deliberate practice, it's always the best kind of practice that there is. It's all about focusing on your weaknesses and setting very intentional goals on how you want to improve and not just showing up. And also when it comes to flow, the state in which we perform at our best, that is also not going through the motions. It is being 100% focused, being so engaged in the activity that you forget about everything else. Now, showing up isn't enough for elite performers. However, for beginners, I do think that showing up is what's most important at first. If beginners focus too much on their weaknesses, they're going to feel overwhelmed and basically it's important for them to show up and not measure the results too much in the beginning because the results are going to be bad because they haven't put as much practice in and in most cases the first step is the most difficult step and you don't need to make that step even more difficult by criticizing yourself and then the fourth one would be mind over feelings to be disciplined. You can't be successful if you're not disciplined, if you're not willing to put in the hard work. Now what's interesting, when Tim Grover wrote his book, his publisher suggested that it would be a good idea to, for example, write a title for his book like Five Easy Steps to, I don't know, become successful or what do I know? Because that's what most people want. Most people want easy ways to get results. But Tim Grover refused because he didn't want a title that suggested, misleadingly suggested, that you can take shortcuts because there are no shortcuts. You have to put in the hard work. And then the fifth one is that he believes that we need to tap into our dark side and also be able to control our dark side. Very often it's the case that people who hit rock bottom only then change, but then they change a lot, become extremely driven because they want to make sure that they never hit rock bottom again. And pain can be very motivating, so ignoring pain would not necessarily be too good if you want to actually achieve a lot. Because pain, combined with reflection, is what leads to progress. Even though it sounds like you would like 
to have a life without pain. If there is no pain, there is no meaning. We very often attach meaning to pain. And the reason why is that we feel pain when we think that something is important to us. And if we have things that are important to our life, then we're going to feel pain when those needs are not met or when we lose that certain thing we find important. Honestly, what's the point of living a life in which you find nothing important? Many people think when they hear the word passion, they somehow have this image in their head that everything is wonderful, everything is just rainbows and unicorns. <laughs> passion actually comes from the Latin and it means something like suffering. And the reason is that passion is something that you care so much about that you're willing to go through pain to have that thing. Now, if you want to know how Kobe Bryant deals with fearing failure, you can watch this video here.